and welcome to this review of Highlight on the NES. Highlight is a game that's faced a lot of negative feedback since it's released to the web. Is the negative press earned? Or should Highlight be bumped back into the light? Highlight was made way back in 1984 by Tokihiro Naito of TNE Soft, taking inspiration from older games such as Tower of Draga. He felt that adding RPG elements could bring a lot to the genre. Completely unaware that there were other games being made in a similar vein, with Dragon Slayer being the biggest competitor, and even releasing before um, Highlight. TNE Soft released the game on PC88 and PC6001 in December of 1984, ported it to numerous systems over the following years, including the Famicom, March 1986. It would even see a EU release in this time on MSX285, but no one really talks about that though. In Japan, the game was really well received, selling over 2 million copies between the home PC releases and Famicom release. But it would be a very different story in the West. The main release of Highlight for us was June 1989, it was five years after the original release, but it hit US shores on the NES. Like I said, the MSX, MSX2 version just seemed to disappear into obscurity and no one talks about it. The game was not well received at all often being compared to Legend of Zelda that was released three years before in 1986. Well, there's very little plot in the game itself, so we have to look to the manual to tell us the story. And it's pretty simple. The evil demon, Veralis, has transformed the fair princess Anne into three fairies and unleashed monsters on the magical world of Fairyland. And it's up to the noble hero, Jim, Yes, Jim. You're Jim the Knight. Uh, yeah, that's just it. Jim the Knight. To uh, go defeat the evil demon and save the princess. And that's it. So let's set off and slay the demon. The gameplay is about as old school as you can get. You literally just walk into the enemies to hurt them and there's a chance that either you'll be hit or the enemy will hit you. Uh, bump into them enough times and you can kill them and you gain some experience. Get enough experience, you level up and you get a little bit stronger and have a bit more HP. And that's about it. Well, no, no, there's a bit more to it than that. You have two modes, so attack and defend. You default to defend and then you hold a button to switch to attack. And in attack mode, you do more damage, but you take more damage. And the reverse and defend mode, so you do less damage and take less damage. And also, if you hit the enemy from behind, you'll not get hit back, or that chance will go down. Um, you can also collect some spells in the game, which can be used on the enemies, or solve a couple of the puzzles that you face, and you have to use the spells and know where to use them. Um, there's also health regeneration, which is one of those you just stand around, dodge the enemies and your health will come back, but it's very slow. Um, and with all this, you basically head out, grind out some levels, uh, complete some of the obscure puzzles, and with a bit of luck, you'll defeat Veralis and save Fairyland. And that's all there is to the gameplay, really. Not really much to say on the graphics and sound front. Um, it's a game from 1984. The graphics were a bit better than its competitor Dragon Slayer. Uh, but overall, they're barely serviceable. And, well, the sound's basically just the Indiana Jones theme tune on repeat, like 99% of the game. And if you've been listening to the soundtrack in the back of this, you'll hear all the different tracks. So you've got the normal theme, a slightly faster one, there's one for the password one for the dungeon and one for the uh, completing the game and that's pretty much the entire track list for this game and yeah like i said the graphics kind of do the job but it's 1984 so what do you expect this game gets a lot of stick in the west and i can understand it it's not a great game it's clunky lacking direction and just plain frustrating at times 
I can understand as a NES fan in 1989, getting hold of this game, having high expectations after playing Legend of Zelda, getting it home, playing it, and just feeling a bit ripped off. I would have felt the same way, but knowing that it's one of the grandfathers of genre I love, I'm willing to give it a bit of slack, but this is with hindsight. Um, and while I wouldn't recommend playing the game, I would say it still deserves a place in any collector's collection. So go out, if you find a good deal on it, pick it up and just add it to your collection. Wouldn't necessarily recommend playing it though. So if you enjoyed this episode, please uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much. See you again soon.